So let's talk about an interesting case of some tournament misplays that has led to the winner of one of Games Workshop's flagship tournaments dropping out and seeding victory to second place. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I was interested enough to cover the mild drama that seems to have fallen out of Games Workshop's latest big tournament over in the USA, with a case of a dodgy battle wagon taking a zap gun somehow winding up being tournament critical. All the fallout for this one is to do with Games Workshop's Tacoma Open Tournament in Washington, one of their US Open series of tournaments, so generally quite big events, pretty well attended, with a whole load of very competitive players converging on the scene to try and get victory. The winner of this was playing Orcs and was kind of notable, given that it was the only big event that Orcs had won since the Pariah Nexus update, even if a lot of other good players have placed highly. In any case, with this player dropping out, apparently that's not going to be an Orc victory anymore, instead it's going to go to Sisters of Battle, and the whole case does seem to have been documented unusually well on the internet. Pretty clear accounts of the event coming out, both from people who are there and the player in question. Before we go through the details, I did want to say just one big disclaimer, and that I'm not trying to look at this to try and direct any more internet rage at the player in question. I'm very wary about doing that sort of thing, as obviously I wasn't there at the event, and I'm a bit wary of trusting online reports. Though for this one it's kind of interesting, in that the facts don't really seem to be disputed at all. Both the player themselves and other reports seem to be fairly consistent on that, and it's more just people debating the actual intent behind them. I just found this whole case particularly interesting, as it just has a fair few interesting grey areas about what's acceptable and what isn't, and what's intentional and what's not. And just in general what people expect to happen when something gets played wrong at a tournament, has all led to quite a big outcome with a tournament getting its result changed, and the player choosing to give up first place, even if the judges didn't state that they had to. In any case though, this is the main misplay that seems to have happened, both from the player themselves and other accounts. It sounds like the misplay was allowing Gaskell Thracker to hide in the battle wagon with an Ard case and Zap gun on it, both of which basically forbid the big boss from entering and are listed on the datasheet as such. Until recently, Gaskell had the awkward case of not being able to embark in any battle wagons if he had a bodyguard along. The Games Workshop mercifully changed that in a recent errata, so the boss is allowed to ride alongside an entourage of Mega Nobs and Makari. It is interesting though that the Ard case and taking the Zap gun don't actually modify the transport's capacity at all, so it still would have the same slots that it would normally have. But there's a specific rider at the bottom of the datasheet saying that Gaskell Thracker can't embark if the vehicle has an Ard case or Zap gun. Basically the trade-off for the upgrades is that the Ard case gives the battle wagon toughness 12 rather than toughness 10, and the Zap gun gives you one scary anti-vehicle shot, but it's not going to do too much most of the time as it only hits on a 5+. plus. If you want those benefits though, as mentioned Gaskell can't ride, and it also stops you getting the firing deck as well. So you couldn't shoot models like flash kits out the top, essentially it sounds like this was played with both sets of benefits until round 6, so you both had a tougher battle wagon with the extra shot on it, but also allowing Gaskell to be carted around. According to both reports and the player, it sounds like a judge was involved on round 6 and gave the player a yellow card, a 10 point victory point penalty for that given round only, and then placed Gaskell back in the player's deployment zone as if he hadn't moved all game, essentially trying to simulate him getting no benefit from the transport I guess. Obviously for this one there was no doubt there was a misplay, though I feel like more of the debate has been around whether it was intentional or not, and how bad the advantage gained was. Just thinking about that army list, I can't help but think that if there was a mistake, it was probably listing the Ard case and Zap gun on the army list to start with, rather than just giving it the toughness 10 and the firing deck. Just seems overall for that one, if you wanted to transport Gaz around in the battle wagon, then that's going to be quite a lot more game pivotal, rather than having toughness 12 versus T10. It definitely will be a factor in how tough it was to take down against a bunch of anti-tank weapons, but it's not like the Toughness 10 Battle Wagon isn't quite hard to destroy anyway, it still has a good save and its AP debuff rule and a whole bunch of wounds. Obviously it was played wrong, but just in terms of actual advantage gained of getting plus 2 Toughness and 1 inaccurate anti-tank shot, it doesn't really strike me as a thing that would usually be impactful enough to flip a game from victory to defeat, though obviously in Warhammer 40k occasionally certain models can just be super critical whether they survive or not. In terms of intention it does feel like it would be an odd thing to deliberately cheat about, as mentioned not really game changingly impactful and just ridiculously easy to verify after the fact if you looked through the army list and saw that Gaskell clearly couldn't embark on the thing. Plus if they were going in with that plan for some reason, if it was just spotted and corrected early in the first game or something, they'd lose a huge option with Gaskell being able to move it around the table in the battle wagon, and just seems like it would have been better not to play the upgrade. 
I feel like it is kind of impossible to gauge any one mistake like this, just objectively without other context, though if you're looking at it unfavourably, you could view it as sort of one of the errors that people sometimes make in their favour, maybe at least partly or even fully aware that it shouldn't really be played, and then when they're corrected on it, say I'm sorry, I didn't know that, that was a thing, and saying they missed a rule. I must admit I certainly wouldn't attribute it to malice at all in a more casual game or anything, though in general people just have higher expectations of people who are looking to top grand tournaments these days. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about the whole thing was the judges ruling. It does sound like the event staff were absolutely aware that the player had made this misplay for the first five games of the tournament and then only corrected in the sixth I believe. So if they had really wanted to basically say that yes you're not going to be able to win the tournament now you've done that, they absolutely could have, but the actual implementation of that might not necessarily be the easiest. I think it would be quite a big decision to actually kick out a player who travelled a long way, where to the judge in question it merely might not be clear whether or not it's deliberate cheating or not. And given the circumstances, they did get some penalties, the yellow card system to give them a hefty warning, and making sure they had further scrutiny of their games after that, and then quite a major disadvantage to the game that they were actually playing in having their war boss suddenly walk back to their home field and be in a much less useful position, plus a 10 point victory penalty, it seems like it wasn't enough to swing that game. I guess it's just kind of impossible to account for what would have happened in previous games though, if say they had taken the 10 point victory point penalty against all previous opponents, then it looks like from the best coast pairing scores they would have drawn their round 2 game 87 each against Blood Angels, but kind of by that point the ship has already sailed, and several further rounds have been played out, so you can't really apply that in retrospect very easily. I feel like if this had just happened in the backdrop of an event and the player in question had just wound up placing kind of high but not on the actual podium, people really wouldn't have cared too much, but it turned out that the decision was absolutely tournament critical. Even if when the judge made the decision there was a kind of low chance that it'd actually go on to win outright. Otherwise, for further context around it, there was also a criticism of one further misplay beyond that. This one getting a toughness characteristic wrong. Apparently boss Snakerot was played at toughness 6 rather than toughness 5, and that absolutely does make him harder to kill when it matters against a bunch of common profiles, though I'm not sure how critical it wound up being for an actual win or loss of a game. For this one, to my mind, it does seem like a pretty understandable misplay. A bunch of the old big characters, including Snakerot and the war boss, were toughness 6 in 9th edition, that went down to toughness 5 in 10th. This one feeling like maybe not the most intuitive change in the world, given that the vast majority of toughness characteristics went up from 9th to 10th. I'll definitely not be throwing any stones about this one, given that I have made the exact same mistake myself in previous casual games. I guess the memory of that was just kind of ingrained from 9th edition for me, even though I certainly have read and reviewed all codexes on the channel and everything. Beyond those two misplays at this event, doesn't really look like people are pulling up anything else as major errors from the player. And to be honest, I feel like if they were the only thing, as people would probably give them the benefit of the doubt. I think that the issue is that this comes on the background of other contexts out there, and it's just been involved in a bunch of misplays and errors in the past. So when you get to a bit of a critical mass of those, the narrative tends to be a bit more that they make a bunch of mistakes in their favour more than they should. And the player does admit that in their Reddit post talking about how they dropped out of the tournament, saying that they made a bunch of play and list errors, and saying their play was nothing short of sloppy. Obviously that does depend on whether or not you give them the benefit of the doubt when this has happened a few times combined with really quite good event placings. Probably the worst example of these was a particularly bad looking stream that was shared by Wargames Live and I saw that one from a video by Happy Crumping Wargaming who goes through it. They made really quite a big and in-depth video on the subject which I'll link down in the video description. For that stream event though it certainly looked like they were asked a rules question about one given secondary objective back in 9th edition. And on the stream it looks like they read out the rule but omitting one key part that would basically rule against them. I feel like compared with things that have happened at this event that one looks like far more like an objective case of cheating. If you wind up being challenged about a rule and then manage to read it out wrong, particularly when it's very directly important to the overall outcome of the game on how many victory points that you score. In any case, I do feel like there wouldn't have been anywhere near as much outcry or focus on this if the player hadn't actually gone on to win the event. Obviously, it wouldn't have changed the misplays if they had happened to have big effects on the games that they played earlier in the tournament, and if that battle wagon being just a little bit tougher actually somehow made the difference between victory and defeat in one of those early games. It'd still be really quite bad for a player knocked out due to an incorrect ruling. It's definitely a bad look whether it was an intentional or not. In general, the internet's main reaction was that once the misplays were found, even if there's no clear way to say objectively in that case whether or not it was intentional or an accident, 
Getting a sort of medium importance rule wrong for the first whole five rounds of the tournament should be enough to make sure that the player shouldn't outright win, and that either should have been done by the judges, or the player themselves choosing to concede a game, or even asked to have zeros put as their scores in previous rounds. In hindsight, after a whole bunch of internet backlash, it seems like it would have been the best call to do it then and there, as ultimately that's sort of what they've wound up doing anyway by winning the event and then dropping out later. I can imagine that being a kind of psychologically hard thing to do though, if you have been putting in a lot of effort to try and do well at a tournament. Broadly speaking, things have gone well, and the misplay that you've made, while certainly bad, seems unlikely to have been of the severity where it actually changed games from wins to losses to me, at least if we assume that the error was the plus two toughness on the vehicle and the zap gun. I guess it might have also been psychologically hard to drop as well. If the judges did get involved, they applied a punishment to the given game, but didn't ask you to drop out or anything. I could certainly see that feeling like you've had an appropriate punishment, as dictated by the official event staff, and there'd certainly be motivation to keep on playing into the exciting last rounds. In any case though, as mentioned, one week later, the player chose to announce they've dropped from the event overall basically seizing the places, prizes and rankings and things to the runner-up beaten in the final round playing against sisters, and then posted a big Reddit post saying that what they'd done and why they'd done so, at least in their own mind, and apologising for the misplays. The language they used said that they didn't deserve to win the event given the fact that they'd misplayed, but stated it was sloppy errors as opposed to intentional cheating. They said that in the context of the previous mistakes they'd made, should drop out and work on playing better next time. Feels like the internet's response to this was kind of mixed, certainly agreement that seeding first place was the right thing to do, given that the majority of the games had been played with at least a medium-sized misplay. The whole bunch of the most upvoted comments aren't convinced that this is just sloppy play, and just see it as outright cheating in context of the prior record, and in particular that War Games Live clip recently chaired by the Happy Crumping channel. In any case, hopefully the player in question will be able to turn their reputation around, though I suspect it would involve really quite a lot of tournaments of playing without any controversy at all. For a bunch of people to forgive and forget, the internet does have really quite a long memory with this sort of thing. And in particular, I feel like being on a streaming table really isn't going to help people recover their reputation once they've acted badly once. If there is something that looks like deliberate cheating, it's always able to be dredged up to have a look at the fresh act in the moment. It certainly keeps it fresh in people's minds. In any case, let me know what you think of the whole thing. It is kind of impressive just how much drama one battle cannon with an hard case top and a zap gun can cause. I think I'd be most interested to hear what you guys think you'd really do in reality if you made a misplay on a similar sort of level, or whether you think the tournament judges should have handled it any differently. In any case, if you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel and keep the videos coming, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that link down in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.